All right, so we went ahead and drew up our design right there. Let's cut it out. As for the layout, take a piece of steel, take a template, lay it on your piece of steel. There's a couple different ways you could do this. You could take spray paint and just shoot over it. Put a couple magnets on your template so it doesn't move. Sometimes the force of the spray paint can move that. Um, that's if you have time. If you don't have time, I use blue dicum, which is a layout fluid right here. Dicum. It's a layout fluid and I paint this this on my piece of steel. I just paint it on You don't have to paint it everywhere just where you're gonna need your lines It's real easy and the reason that I use this stuff is because it dries super quick So there isn't a long period of time where you're gonna be waiting around waiting for it to dry That should be good enough. This is not an exact science. This is I showed you this because if this is your first knife, you probably don't have dicum laying around. So go ahead and use the uh, spray paint method. And then there's a, when we go in to grind in the bevels, we need to mark the edge. I'll use Dicum again, but you could just use a black Sharpie. That works out great. Okay, so let me let that dry for a second. I'm going to come around. We'll lay this on there and I'll trace around it. Take your scribe, your scribe around. I don't even really get too close to it. You know, this is what I was talking about, about how knife making is a fluid art. These are just reference lines. There we go. We're going to start the profiling now and I'm going to go ahead and take a four and a half inch angle grinder with the cutoff wheel and cut off the majority of this material before we move on to refining the profile. What I do think is important always when you're working in the shop is personal protective equipment. So that's why I'm wearing this guy right here. I put my hood up. I like to wear a shop apron. It protects me from any metal pieces that are flying around. Get that going on. I wear a respirator like this. And I wear safety glasses right there. Now we're For the next part, I'm going to take this rough profile right here. It's rough. It's got chunks and spurs and stuff sticking out everywhere. It kind of looks like a knife right now. There we go. You can see it against the background. Oh, there it is. I'm going to take this and I'm going to clean it up and I'm going to refine the profile. There's a lot of different ways that you could do this. You can throw this in a vise and draw file it with just files if that's all you have. You could clean it up further with the angle grinder with the grinding disc. You could do that. 
You can buy a cheap 1x30 belt sander from Harbor Freight. That's probably going to be your best method at getting the profiling done on the cheap. It is one of those little 1x30 belt sanders. Or you can use a 2x72, which is what I'm going to do. I would actually do this on a 1x30 to show you. It's essentially the same thing as using my 2x72. Or you could use um, one of those 4-inch belts or a 6-inch belt. Any type of belt sander that you can come up with would work great for this. And I'm going to bring in here one of the best things that a belt sander can do is it can give you a work surface that's 90 degrees to the belt and that's huge in knife making you really want to keep this 90 degrees and crisp crisp enough to cut you uh, if this is rounded over then it's never going to make a good nice crispy edge when you put your handle scales on and that's what you're really looking for in knife making for a good finished product is when your scales are on there's no gaps it's crispy it's really nice and clean and you achieve that by keeping a 90 degree edge right here throughout the entire process these corners back here if you don't want the the end rounded completely over you need to keep those sharp they're not going to feel good in your hand when they're sharp uh, when it's just a piece of metal but once you put the handle scales on and then refine the scales that will not dig into your hand anymore. So I'm going to bring you in. I'm going to show you my work surface that I use to keep this at 90 degrees and let's get this ground in. So this principle is 100% the same depending on whatever type of sanding machine that you're using. Basically, if you keep your material at 90 degrees to the belt, you're going to get that nice crispy edge that I was just telling you about. Yeah, a year later and I still haven't replaced that circuit breaker. Shame on me, right? Here we go, back to work. Had to run downstairs and flip the breaker. All right, so here we go. We're just refining in this profile. I did mark some lines, and you'll see sometimes I go through the line, I pick it up, I hold it in my hand, I see how it feels. And then when I get closer to my end product, you might see that it, it doesn't, the lines don't flow exactly the way you want. So this is that time where you make adjustments. You know, if, if it wasn't exactly what you saw in your mind, it's a form of art. You don't have to stay true to the plan that you put on paper. This is that time where you can go through and make changes and, you know, alter the way it feels. You can see right there, I'm testing it in my hand. One thing I want to caution you on when you're wearing a glove, it'll feel different when you're wearing a glove in your hand than it does with your bare hand. Your glove increases the size of your hand, which is also nice because a lot of times you do wear a glove when you're using a knife. So if you're test fitting the knife in your hand without a glove and you make your whole knife, you might find that when you put a glove on, it's a little small now. So just some things to think about while you're doing your profile. In this stage of the process, you want to make sure that you get this profile completely dialed in. The next thing we're going to do is drill these pinholes. This is crucial. The reason I didn't mark my pinholes is because when you're profiling and you're feeling it in your hand, sometimes these lines that you drew out weren't accurate to how it should feel in your hand. You might take a little more material off here, maybe a little more material off the top, and if you measured on your design and put your pin placements and then you took off more material on one side or the other, your pin would not be in the middle anymore. So I wait to mark my pins out until I've got the profile completely set and where I want it. Once I get the profile where I want it, now we'll go over, we'll put some layout die on here and we'll mark out those pin placements and get them drilled. I'm going to go ahead and say, let's go... 500, let's go a half an inch. That's good enough right there, half an inch. So right there, half an inch from the front of the scale, half an inch from the butt of the knife. That's going to be the center of my front and my back pin. Whatever size pin that I decide to go with. Now, I'm going to take this measurement here, right here, 
Oddly, that's a half an inch, which doesn't normally work out like that, but it did on this one. So that's a that vector right there is going to be where we put that pin. Take that right there. Oops. That vector is going to be the center pin. Then what we're going to do is we're going to measure between there and there. Perfect. Right there is the middle. There it is right there. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and lock up front. Center. Oh man, it bounced on me. For this particular build, I've decided to use a quarter inch black uh, linen micarta pin stock. The pin options for knife making are unlimited. You can use micarta, G10, you can use brass, nickel silver, stainless steel, you name it. They've got all kinds of different things out there that you can use. The big deal here is to make sure that you've got the right size drill bit for the pin stock that you choose for the knife that you're building. Like I said, I decided to go a full quarter inch on these. This is just black pin stock right here. I've gone ahead and roughed it up. I just took it, pushed my finger against the sanding belt and roughed it up just to kind of clean it up. When you're drilling a knife, I would strongly suggest that you clamp it down. Here's why. If you're drilling into this and the drill bit catches the steel, it's going to fling this knife around like a helicopter blade. Okay? That's not good. Now, when I do my larger knives where the blade's much longer, I don't clamp it down. Here's because if, if it does catch on a larger blade, say it's this big and it spins, it's just going to hit the stanchion of the drill press and it's not going to go any farther. But on these smaller knives, you can either take your chances or you can clamp it down. Here we go. You could address the burrs a couple different ways. I used to take this right over the sanding belt and sand those, but I found out that puts sanding scratches on my finish. And since I buy the precision ground steel, it, uh, it costs me a lot of extra work. So now what I do 
is I just put a larger drill bit in my drill press and uh, chamfer the hold, holes with it. And all we're doing is knocking the knocking the burr off. That's it. Perfect. Now for the part where we actually start making a knife. We're gonna now focus on grinding in the bevels of the knife, which is gonna take this just piece of metal right here and start shaping it into a knife.